Hey everyone, it's Kristen. I'm here. I know I'm a little bit late for my 17 week update. Um, we just got finished with Holy Week, so it's been, you know, it's just, and my dad actually arrived on Monday. He flew in on Monday, so, you know, just been spending days with him and kind of getting past um, Passover and unleavened bread and everything like that. So it's just been kind of not crazy, but just busy. Um, and so I'm a little bit late. So I'm 17 weeks and three days today. It's a little bit further into 17 weeks, but I thought I'd talk about some of my signs and symptoms and things first. And then I actually brought some things over to show y'all. So firstly, one of the things that I've noticed um, markedly in the last few days is that the nausea seems to be pretty much done. Now, I, I'm going to show you in a few minutes. I started a new vitamin, and I don't know if that might have helped, or it could just be coincidence, because like I said, I am 17 weeks now, and so it could definitely just be that it's time for that stuff to fade, finally. Um, like I said before, it, was most, it had mostly stopped and had gotten to where it was just like associated with something, like I'd see or smell something icky and then the nausea would rise up. And then also, I think I mentioned in another video, like a lot of times, like if I had been sitting for a while and then got up and moved to do something different, like working on the computer or reading to the kids or something, and then got up and went to the bathroom, that like I would feel that nausea just from, I guess, from the position change. And that's not really happening at all anymore. And like, Last night I took a measuring cup out of the cabinet that the kids hadn't washed very well and you know a couple weeks ago that would have had me like you know gagging for probably a good five minutes and it I, it just didn't really bother me so that's a huge relief. Um, I did have, I went to a birth um, last week at some point and it was it was a middle of the night one so I got called around midnight and one of the things about the births when I've been called in the middle of the night since I got pregnant is I tend to get really nause nauseated. Um, and that one was no different. But what I thought was really interesting was so I was driving to the birth that was about an hour away. So I had a pretty good drive. And it was in the middle of the night, but we drove through some smaller cities. And at that time of night, there's still people on the road. My favorite time actually to drive to and from a birth is like around 2 or 3 or so because there's usually nobody else on the road. Before that, you have people coming home at the end of the, you know, I guess being out and about socializing or whatever. And then if you get much later, like especially around five or six, people are going to work. But there's like that sweet spot where there's usually nobody on the road. That's my favorite time to drive. But this was around midnight, so there was still a fair number of people on the road and like the lights um, reflecting off like my rear view mirror were making me feel really ill. And I was nervous because I had just seen... Um, somebody pulled over on the side of the road and when you're driving to try and get to a birth I mean, I'm not being a speed demon, but I am trying to get there. So, you know, I'm feeling nauseated I've got these lights constantly coming in the mirror and everything. So there was I was in a place with a passing lane So I was actually intentionally slowing down because there were lights in my mirror and I wanted them to go around me to get the lights gone and um and, you know, I was feeling like really queasy at that point. Like I was coughing, feeling so queasy. But like when the car passed, I realized it was my preceptor. So the supervising midwife, because she has a very distinct car with a distinct sticker on the back of it. And I was like, oh, you know, that's my preceptor. And like my stomach settled like within the next five minutes amazingly. So that was interesting to me that like there was definitely, I think, an emotional component to that, that just knowing that was her and I was behind her, you know, that was comforting to me. First of all, because one of the things this is really funny, like a student midwife admission, I don't know if this happens to the midwives who have been there for a while, probably not, because they're the ones that talk to the mom. But usually, you know, I'm on call for two, two moms in a month, and sometimes a busy month more. And so, like, I will get the call in the middle of the night, and she'll say, you know, so-and-so is in labor, and then I'll like always second guess myself when I hang up. It's like, did she say this woman or this woman? And it's like I've momentarily panicked. Like, what if I'm going to the wrong woman's house? And so anyways, so seeing her on the road, you know, I was like, okay, I did hear the right mom. But anyways, so, um, but that was like really the very last time that I felt any nausea at all. Um, so I don't know if I get called out again. I'm waiting on a mom who's due soonish too now. And then another one is due in like a week. So, 
you know, I could get called um, out in the middle of the night again, and I don't know if it will recur. I hope it doesn't, but I've definitely noticed that during the daytime, just day-to-day -day normal life pretty much has faded, so that's really wonderful. Um, I'm still, we've been on a break for school for the Holy Week and everything like that, so I haven't been trying to get up on time. I want to try and get up on time maybe tomorrow and Friday just because we will start school again next week. But, so I feel like I've been getting a lot of rest. I feel like I've been sleeping tons, but we have stayed up a little bit later. We've been watching Downton Abbey again. And, excuse me, we've stayed up a little bit later than usual, so we've slept a little bit later. But I felt pretty rested. I don't feel like super fatigued. I'm definitely feeling more motivated. Still feeling a little bit of kind of, I guess, lack of motivation to really get up and just, you know, hit the to-do list, doom, 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 which is usually not something I have a huge problem with, but during early pregnancy, it's it's much more difficult. So, but I'm, I'm definitely starting to get more done, um, meeting more goals and that sort of thing. So, you know, I would say the fatigue overall is also wearing off. Um, otherwise, like, my breasts are still pretty tender. I would say that's about the same. Um, let me think about any other symptoms. Going to the bathroom a lot still. But really, like, I think, I feel like most of the early pregnancy stuff is kind of fading. Like, the major food cravings and aversions that I've had seem to be mostly fading. I still don't want rice very much. That was an aversion I had with Sadie and I've had again. So I still don't want rice very much. Um, or not in certain ways. Like, in other ways, like in a chicken and rice soup or something, it's fine, but... Um, like thinking about beans and rice still doesn't sound good, but like all the things that I was craving early on, like pizza, chicken nuggets, that sort of thing, not really having any cravings anymore. Um, I am still kind of craving sushi, so I'm going to show you something about that too. But anyway, so yeah, I think the symptoms are pretty, you know, they're pretty minor right now as far as pregnancy symptoms go. Um, let's see, other things. So I got my labs done. Remember I told y'all last week I was going to get those done. I went in almost a week ago today. It was actually last Thursday, so one day less than a week ago. Um, got those drawn. The doctor's office um, for my primary care provider is who ordered that lab. And the receptionist called me the next morning, which was really nice, to let me know that everything was normal. And then they up updated my online records so I was able to actually go look at the lab value because she didn't tell me what the value was. She just told me it was normal. And so when I went and checked, so what they were doing was they redid the TSH because uh, if you all remember, my TSH was really low. And so we retested again and it was slightly higher, but still well outside of the normal range. And so they did, so that did a cascade and they tested T4, which was normal. So what you're looking for when TSH is low is that's possible hyperthyroidism. So you look for the T4 levels to be high. Um, whereas with hypothyroidism, you would have high TSH and T4 levels would be low. They have an, the, those two have an inverse relationship. So anyways, my T4 levels were normal, So, which kind of pointed to it. it is a normal variation of pregnancy, especially between 9 and 12 weeks pregnant, for TSH to be low. But we wanted to retest in my second trimester just to see if the levels had come back up. Um, and I particularly wanted to test at 16 weeks because I had, I actually had my pregnancy blood work done at 16 weeks in my last two pregnancies just because that's when I got around to it. But I had the TSH levels from those pregnancies. So when she put the number up, I was able to compare that um, to what it was with Sadie and Corwin during those pregnancies. And it's almost, it was almost exactly the same. Sorry, I keep bumping the thing, y'all. Um, it was almost exactly the same as it was when I was pregnant with Corwin and just slightly lower than when I was pregnant with Sadie and still within like the normal limits. Still on the lower side of normal, but again, it was very close to what it was in my two previous pregnancies and within the normal limits. So I feel pretty good about that. That was definitely um, a relief for me to get that. So... And they didn't do the T4 again because it don't, they only test the T4 if the TSH is low. And if the T4 had been high or abnormal, they would have tested T3 as well. But again, my T4 levels were normal when they did the cascade before. So anyways, that's done. 
So at this point, I won't, I don't think I'll have any more labs during this pregnancy because um, we don't do some of the labs routinely. We do offer some of them in the office, but I will decline them. Um, like we've, we've had the option for GBS testing for a long time. And then just recently, my senior midwife has started offering a gestational diabetes screening. And um, I'll, I'll decline both of those because I just don't see any reason to do them. Um, but, you know, they're there if women want them. I just don't. And then I'm still planning not to do an ultrasound at all. I really, really, really do not want to know this baby's gender. I mean, I, I'm conflicted. I do. And actually, this is so funny. So I had a birth recently, and I had been to a lot of this mom's appointments, and her mom came to some of the appointments with her. Um, and her mom, like, you know, swore by when she was pregnant, you know, however many years ago, 30 plus years ago, when she was pregnant, she and all the ladies in her neighborhood happened to be pregnant at similar times. And so they all did the Drano test. Y'all have probably heard about the Drano test. And she said it was right for every single one of them. And she was certain she needed to do the Drano test for her daughter. And so you can't really get the crystal Drano anymore, which you actually is what you use to do little Drano gender test. But she found where you could order it online. And so she ordered it and had the mom do it. Um, and she gave me, she brought me a little baggie because they knew I was pregnant. Um, so we actually, we're going to, I think Cassidy and I are going to do it for fun. We're going to do the Drano test, um, outside. I'll probably try and record it so you'll be able to see a video of it. And we're also, we got a red cabbage to do the red cabbage test. And, you know, but to me, that stuff is not guaranteed though. Actually for that mom, the Drano, this mom that had her baby not too long ago, the Drano test said what the baby was. So now the grandma is, of course, triumphant, which I think is just hilariously funny and sweet. So anyways, she wasn't obnoxious about it. She's just funny about it. Um, but so we'll probably do like a few of the gender tests and we'll like talk through some of the old wives tale stuff, you know, like, well, we'll do the ring test and all of that. But to me, that's very different than going for an ultrasound because, you know, no matter what it says, it's like, you know, how accurate is a cabbage and a, a, a jar full of, like, Drano crystals really at, per, at telling you what gender your baby is? It's just silly. It's just fun. But we probably will do those and record those again just because they're fun. But, um, you know, as far as, like, really finding out, I don't really want to know. And I don't really feel that there's any other need for an ultrasound. If I felt like there was, like, a medical indication for it or like we were really suspicious of twins or something would I get it done yeah but otherwise I don't see really any reason so we probably won't have an ultrasound done we did get an ultrasound with Corwin like you know just to have it done and to see how the baby was and everything and I told the tech I did not want to know my baby's gender and she still gave me a picture she told me like during the ultrasound she was really good she's like okay look away I'm gonna go look between the baby's legs and check everything out I need to check out there and so I looked away but then she gave me a picture where you could tell Corwin was a boy and so it was like ah I don't want that to happen again so I'm just not even gonna take a chance I didn't take the chance with Sadie and it was really cool to find out um, and you know I kind of I have anxiety like about you know, is it going to be a boy or a girl or whatever? And I just prefer to bond with my baby knowing that it's my baby. So that's another thing too, is I've been listening with the fetoscope a lot. I've definitely been able to find the baby a lot more. I haven't every single time, but most of the time now, like we've been busy for the past few nights and usually I like to listen at night right before bed because the house is quiet. So this morning I listened when I, right when I got up and I was able to find the baby's heartbeat. It was like in the one thirties. Um, and usually, I feel like the baby's heartbeat's been a little faster typically, like in the 150s, maybe up to 160. But this is now a couple of few times that it's been a little slower, so it's cool to me to hear that variability. There's a blue jay outside my window. But, and I really like that. You know, I just, I love that. I feel like that's nice and bonding, and I like feel, again, I can't, I don't know that I, I don't know if I'm feeling the baby or not. I'm going to talk to the midwife about it today. Because one of the things that's interesting to me is like the fundus, which is the top of the uterus, I can feel it like like right at my belly button now. So I think last week it was like right there at the bottom of my belly button and now I can like feel it like about mid belly button or even at the top of my belly button when I'm laying down. And so most of the time when I find the baby's heartbeat though, it's much lower, like down, you know, down near the pubic hairline or just above that and also towards the center. Um, like the center of my belly 
and but up up at the top near my belly button I can always kind of feel a mass so I don't know if that's just like the top of the uterus which is thicker or if that's the baby but then this morning like I could feel like a pretty big lump I guess maybe a lump of baby and like that's right where I found the heartbeat this morning so that's interesting that's some I have an appointment this afternoon so that's something I'll talk to her about this afternoon but I really like feeling it's not something I ever did in my early pregnancies really and in my pregnancy I don't know probably with Corwin is when I really started asking the midwife you know help me feel and then with Sadie, obviously, I started listening with the fetoscope and was just, you know, feeling more and more confident with feeling my own baby. And now I really like doing it. I feel much more confident feeling on myself than on another woman in the office when I go in for prenatals. So anyways, but I think I think maybe I'm starting to feel a lump of baby. But at this point, 17 weeks, the baby's pretty big, really, like eight to 10 inches. I think all the baby things are saying like the size of a pomegranate when you think about fruit. But, um, you know, still you can't, like, feel a head or a butt or anything like that. It's It'll be, you know, probably 10 to 12 weeks before you can even think about differentiating um, between those without the assistance of ultrasound. So, but it's fun to, like, you know, feel that little baby bump. It's really a baby bump. So, anyways, I feel like I'm kind of rambling. So, but I brought, I did bring a couple things to show you. So the first thing I'll show you is this is related to the sushi thing. So after I told y'all that I was craving sushi a few weeks ago, I actually had somebody email me. Um, and you're welcome to email me if you ever want to Kristen at naturalbirthandbabycare.com. But she emailed me. She's like, I want to say she's like, a. She's a little bit behind me in pregnancy. I don't remember exactly how many weeks right now, but she's pregnant too, and she had been craving sushi as well. But she said that her sister got her something for Christmas last year that is kind of like a cheater method to make sushi, and she can use it to make pregnancy-safe sushi. And so we found it on Amazon. It was like less than $10. And so we got one. We haven't tried it yet, but it is called a sushi -Z. And you put, you know, you stick, you put your rice in it, and then you put in whatever toppings you want and then you can kind of shoot out the sushi roll and then you just roll it in the nori and slice as, as per usual. So I thought that was a really good idea because you can put whatever in it. She said that her, I think she said her brother doesn't even like sushi, but he did kind of like a Mexican Spanish rice roll with it, which I thought was, that was a cool idea too. But like, especially if you do like sushi, being able to put the nori on, that's lots of because nori is a, is a sheet of seaweed, so that's lots of nice trace minerals and sea vegetables, which gives you stuff that, I mean, in the sea, some of those trace minerals are very um, rich and abundant, whereas in our soils, they're more depleted, so getting that in pregnancy, I think, is good for you. And so in this, you know, you can do cucumber and avocado and that sort of thing and keep, you know, what you don't need out. And, like, for us, too, like, we don't, you know, we eat... Um, only meats and fish and things that are listed as as clean in the Bible. So, like we don't eat crab or any or eel or anything like that, which is sometimes in regular sushi. So, you know, we can make it with just okay things for pregnancy and also okay things for eating in sushi for us. Like normally, it would be okay to eat say tuna or salmon sushi, but again, in pregnancy, I won't say that I never eat things like smoked salmon and stuff during pregnancy because sometimes I do. But obviously the popular and, um, you know, prevailing recommendation is that you don't. So this is kind of a cool little tool if you are craving sushi to be able to make sushi at home that maybe only has ingredients that are okay. Like the cucumber and avocado or cream cheese or something. So the other two things I wanted to show you was one, I wanted to show you the vitamins that I'm taking right now, which is, these are Dr. Ron's vitamins, and it's his Doc's Best, and I can't, oh, I can't remember what his website is right now, and it doesn't have it on the bottle, but it's Doc, it's Dr. Ron, R-O-N, and you can just search for him in the search engine, and I'm sure he'd come up, but I actually found this vitamin because um, one of the moms in our, in our practice was taking them, and she brought them in, and I was like reading the bottle, and I was just really, really impressed. Um, by how they source their ingredients, that there's no fillers or anything. And also just, I mean, I actually compared these to a bottle of prenatal vitamins that we had in the office. And these are just a much higher quality vitamin. Now the interesting thing when I went to the site and researched them is that's per six capsules. 
And so he actually recommends, Dr. Ron actually recommends that you take the number of capsules based on your nutrient needs, but for pregnant and nursing moms, he recommends taking all six capsules a day. And I mean, and this is all like, you know, the good forms of everything, like folate rather than folic acid and everything like that. So again, like I said, I started, I've taken these religiously since they got here, and that's coincided with the nausea decreasing. And again, I don't know if it's because of the vitamin or if it's just because of the timing of it, which I think is very possible. But I haven't even been taking them for quite a week yet, but I'm really interested to see if after I've been taking them for a week or two, um, if I notice other positive effects. So I'll let you know, and they're all non-GMO ingredients, which is cool. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you, because I get asked about brands a lot, so sometimes I like to show brands. So this is the vitamin D. I'm just taking this for a little bit to kind of bring up my vitamin D levels because the lab showed that those were low. So this is a thorn vitamin. It's actually vitamin D and K2. So there's vitamin K2 in it as well. And I just take a few drops of this a day. There's not so much vitamin D in this, which I think is interesting. Everything's really high, but not vitamin D. So I don't know if that's because um, Dr. Ron recommends you take cod liver oil as well. So that might be why, because he's thinking you're going to take cod liver oil too. Um, and I am trying to take like a teaspoon of cod liver oil every day. And I didn't bring that in here because it's in the fridge. But right now I'm taking Rosita brand um, because I heard that it was a little easier to take than some of the other brands. And I do think it's easier to take, but it's still not easy to take. So um, I usually try and chase it with something. It's easiest on the day I've made a smoothie because I take the cod liver oil and immediately drink the smoothie. And that kind of helps. It's harder on other days when I don't have something that substantial to, to chase it. But anyways, I wanted to show you all those things, and I guess now I'll go ahead and show you my belly and finish up, because I know we're at 20 minutes here. And like I said, I have a prenatal appointment this afternoon, so I'll tell y'all how that went when I get back. I'm in a Grover shirt, y'all, so hopefully you don't mind Grover. <laughs> this is my totally around the house Grover shirt. Okay, so there's my belly. I haven't been doing as much belly binding this week just because... You know, we were taking days off for unleavened bread, and I was going to give myself a break too. But these are maternity pant or a maternity skirt, so it's got kind of a wide band. But belly's definitely poking out. I feel like with the maternity band, it looks more angular than rounded. I definitely like the rounded look, but I also really like this skirt. So there's, there's the baby belly, without it. It's kind of poking out. If you look at the cover shot for this week, the cover shot I'm going to put up, um, that I'm wearing actually a maternity dress that I got from Poshmark, which I talked about a few weeks ago. Maybe I'll show you all that next week, bring the dress in to show it to you. I really like it, but I think that it makes my bump look really nice. Um, and it still looks kind of small, but not super small. I still feel like I look farther along than I am, but it's okay. I definitely feel like the belly binding is helping. Like I said, I haven't done it as many days this week, but I think that I'll keep doing it, um, at least until it feels really uncomfortable. So anyways, that's what the belly looks like this week, 17 weeks. I'll tell you all about my prenatal appointment when I update you next week, and otherwise, I hope that you have a blessed week.